Welcome to another edition of Talking Models. Today we have a guest with us on Talking Models. My grandson Ethan, as we call him in this, Smashed Ethan. He's doing a project for school on a book that is uh, called Smash Stanley. He was asked to send this character of himself to his pops and gran. Boom. And we're just taking him around on all kinds of adventures. So today I thought it'd be cool if he hung out with uh, Pops on Talking Models. Welcome, Ethan. So today we're also debuting our look at Blackheart Models Universal Horror Monsters Wall Hangers. Up first, Lone Chaney Jr. as the Wolfman. A beautiful piece sculpted by none other than Jeff Yeager and is available through George Stevenson at Blackheart Models. This is just a beautiful sight to behold as you can see. And I'm just going to briefly a little bit talk about how uh, wall hangers can just be a beautiful addition to your collection. I'm a fan of them. It also helps you as a painter to have something this large it gives you opportunities to work on your eyes techniques. It gets you an opportunity to work on shadows, shading, dry brushing, everything that you've always wanted to maybe, no pun intended, brush up on. These give you a great opportunity to do just that. You can just see everything that, about it. I mean, the fur on here, the everything, the skin, the eyes, uh, the shirt, so much that you can do, so much that you can experiment with, and in the end, you're going to have a beautiful piece to display in your collection. So just kind of briefly today, um, as I start this series on the wall hangers from Blackheart Models, I'm going to talk just a little bit on what I've done. I don't have the paints out today. This was probably done a year ago or more. And I'm just going to give you a, a brief run through and I'll probably do the same on every following wall hanger that I do. Instead of going into great detail on how I did it, you can hit me up for information. I'm just going to basically display the awesome pieces and just give you maybe highlight something special on each one. Maybe something that you may want to try. So as you can see, there he is, Lone Cheney Jr as the Wolfman from Universal Horror and this was from what 1941 I wasn't even around yet if you're watching this and you were around then send me something because you get a boom so as you can see this whole thing was base coated in black that was always my starting point over an automotive gray primer you want to have that nice bite for everything to adhere to primer makes a difference because if you don't you'll find out that maybe the paint starts coming off it may start just peeling off so many different things once you prime it paint it dull coat it lacquer whatever you use your paint should hold up especially if people want to touch them and handle them no no touching mm -mm -mm. right Ethan so over the black we just uh, came in with a uh, light green and just started airbrushing his shirt shadowing with transparent black back and forth boom over the hair was just basically going over with a tie-in brown just to give the first coat of brown and then a dry brushing dream uh, i believe it on this one was like a burnt sienna and a um, different type of brown it was most likely probably a dark brown just start dry brushing away everywhere you see your highlights dry brush dry brush dry brush and then you want to come back in with transparent black, tone it down. Again, process is the key on this. Thing. Just be patient and don't rush it. Skin tone over the black. Uh, was, uh, come in here, depending however you want to do your Wolfman. Just come in and start building up. For this one, I uh, was basically a couple different flesh tones. I believe what I used on this was like a suntan flesh back and forth with dark brown transparent washes through the airbrush 
uh, hitting your shadows, hitting your shadows again with transparent black. The nose was straight up transparent black on the nose. Uh, and then you just keep going with it. And if I can spin it around here a little bit so I can kind of see what I'm doing. On the eyes, uh, you want to come in with some types of red. These were done before I discovered transparent red. Or I'm sorry, transparent Mars red. So what I just basically did with this, I just kind of like built up my reds with pastels. Different reds, uh, raw sienna, just kind of mix it in. Then of course you want to do a nice smooth coat of your flesh tone, real light, water it down so you don't wash out the pastel. And just mist it over it. Then it was just basically shadowing with transparent black, transparent dark brown until you get what you're looking for. The lips were lightly hit uh, with the pastels, just building it up a little bit and then a light misting of a transparent red. I believe on this I might have even used pink eye burgundy from the Badger Freak Flex line. Teeth, favorite color for animals and creatures, rotten tooth tan, and then washes with transparent dark brown, transparent raw umber. Now if you get up to his eyes, that's where I think you're, for me, critical on this is the eyes. The eyes have it, right? And the building of the skin tones going from the flesh into the fur. Always pay attention on that. So I would think the highlight on this for me was the blending in from the skin to the fur. And that was uh, done with transparent dark brown and transparent black. The key is the uh, natural blend coming from his flesh to the hair. So just keep building that back up. Go dark here, go darker where the fur meets, kind of lighten it out into your flesh tone. And you can always come back in with your flesh tone and touch it up here. Just get a fine airbrush. Or for me, I like using my Patriot Extreme 105. It's got the nice high trigger. You can actually use that pretty good for detail. So I can always come back in and just kind of punch that up. Kind of went darker transparent black around the eyes to give them that look. A little heavier on the red for the sinister angry look. And for his eyes, that's kind of what I want to touch on for this one. As you can see, I decided to go blue on his eyes. And that was uh, done very delicately. You have to just kind of experiment with how you want to have the eyes. Do you want them to pop? Do you want them to be back? Do you want them to look, have that cardiac look? Uh, whatever you're trying to accomplish, give it some thought. Don't just jump in and start going because what's going to happen, because this may or not happen to me before, you just start going over it, washing it back off, redoing the eye, starting over. And after about four or five times, you start getting a little aggravated, a little upset, thinking this ain't worth it, I'm no good, I can't paint. All those things, you know, you go through that. So why not just give it a little bit of a thought, draw it out, Google it, look at all the different eye techniques and different eye colors that are out there. You can't go to the original because it's black and white. Decide, give it some thought, put it in action. So for this, I always start with the pupil. I just usually take a real fine paintbrush and I just draw half moons. Just kind of look at the center of the eye. A lot of times I use my Anne Marie as my model. If I'm trying to get that look this way or this this way, I always she does it for me and then I can see it. Then I just pencil it in. So for me, you can either just take a real fine pencil and just do a circle, real light, or I've gotten to the point now where I can just take a paintbrush with some black real fine and just do the moons on each side. And then you can come back in once you get that. Then you come in with a black paint and just fill it in. And then you'll want to take a black pastel and do the outer pieces of that moon or that circle, if you will, to lighten it up and blend it so it has that um, not hard line of a circle, but it's more shaded like your eye. If you look at your eye, it kind of fades. That's what you want to do. So play around with that. Get that right came in with a little bit of a darker blue, filled in the eye pupil, but leave a hint of the black pupil, kind of just fill that in and go back, you know, get it so it's nice. Don't use thick paint or thin it down because you don't want it lumpy or clumpy. 
you want to just kind of get it nice and just flow it on. Airbrushing is the best way to do it. Get that nice smooth finish, which I did. You come back in now with the airbrush and I just lightened the blue up, got a real lighter color. I believe this was the Afixia Blue from Badger Freak Flex. Loaded up in my uh, Chrome from Badger or whatever detailed airbrush you use. And just go in and take that airbrush and just kind of hit the center of that blue. So you want to leave a hint of the other blue. And just kind of do your, get your motion, practice on a piece of paper. And get the motion, fill it in. And then what you can do is you can come in with a darker blue power pastel. And you kind of do the same thing you do with the black on the outer of the eye. Do it with the blue. Lightly build around the ends of the darker blue and it gives you that natural blending of the eye pupil color into the eye. And if you look in the mirror at your eye, you're going to see what I mean. So then when you're done with that, it's just basically coming back in with a black and doing the dot for the center of the pupil. Take your time. A lot of times what I like to do is I'll take a black pastel on a brush, not really a thin one because you don't have a lot. Get like a medium thin rub it in your pastel off the sandpaper and just do like this and you'll see the circle blow the excess off and just do it again blow it off and then what I like to do once that's set for a few minutes you know I, then I'll come in with black paint and lightly don't go heavy just lightly follow your circle boom call it done and it works trust me it works then what I do is I come in with the red oxide red oxide excuse me and I go right below the pupil to give it that nice thin line. If you pull your eyelid back, you'll see that red. You just put that in, and the eye is done. The eyes have it. Then, of course, use your favorite uh, glosser for the eyes when you're done. You know, get yourself a nice, thin, wider brush. You know, not a flat, but a regular round brush. And just put a couple coats of your lacquer on there, and uh, your eyes will pop. The eyes will just pop out just like our eyes are glossy. Their eyes are glossy. And that is the Wolfman by Blackheart Models. And this is a licensed kit by Cheney Enterprises. And I'm sure if uh, Mr. Lone Cheney Jr. was alive today, he would really appreciate this capturing a moment from one of his finest films and a role that he had been known for and played for many years. So do yourself a favor, hit up George Stevenson at Blackheart Models, tell him Troy at Talking Models sent you, and grab one of these gems. Over the next few uh, videos, we're gonna be taking a look at the other uh, wall hangers of George's that I have painted. And uh, you can take a look at them and just gonna, like I say, highlight one specific thing for each video today's was the eyes on the Wolfman was the main point. And I hope you uh, can take something away from this. I hope uh, this video has enticed you to get a hold of George and become a wall hanger fan like this guy and like Ethan. He's a fan. So thanks again for stopping in today to Talking Models. I'd love it if you subscribed and shared this channel with your friends and family and maybe you know a modeler that's uh, just starting out. Some of these videos are going to be just for them. There's a lot of earlier videos that I talk about different techniques. I recommend paints, accessories, and it'll just maybe help them out and keep them into this hobby that I love and that you love or you wouldn't be watching this. So thanks again for stopping in. May the Lord bless your day.